Yeah. I got like into the first few episodes, and then it just yeah. they kept adding more characters. And I was like, it, then it's then then another guy walks in, and I'm like, okay. It it gets pretty crowded later. On. Are we live? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're just talking about uh, Last Man on Earth. Is what last Man on or? Earth, yeah. and then you see other males <laughs> there, and it's you're not the last man. In like episode three, too, I think. So yeah. It's not really the last man on Earth. Well, it's I last... thought it was like last person on Earth. Yeah. And then then you so, see other people, yeah. and then there's other last men. couple just, of people. On it Earth. felt like false advertising. <laughs> It wouldn't have been as successful if it was just, here's a couple of people at the apocalypse. <laughs> um, this is Jess FM. This is YQL Express. I'm Devin Hargreaves, and I'm joined with Derek St. Jean. Thanks for tuning in. And it's been, you know. a, or I guess it's been a normal amount of time, but a new year. That's a <laughs> it's been two weeks and a whole year. Yeah, I guess as those like cheesy jokes go or whatever. Yeah. I haven't seen you since last year. Um yeah, but I was I was talking about this earlier to the before the show. Um, I've been talking about politics all day. I shop at Showcase Comics, and uh, every once in a while when I go in there, it's uh, a couple people end up just getting on a tangent about a political discussion, and then it's uh, me sitting in a comic book store. I love how you word it <laughs> as if like you walk in and people start talking politics to you because I. Um, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a little bit of the way, it is kind of like that, where it's like. Everyone there isn't necessarily, like, political people, but they know I'm pretty, like, politically oriented and stuff like that. So if there's certain things in the news and stuff, somebody might jab me with a couple of jokes or a couple of remarks that end up getting into a discussion and stuff like that. So sometimes it is people talking about politics at me <laughs> sometimes. Today was really good, though. We had a, a good couple of discussions. I'm slipping on this chair all the time. Um, we had a good couple of discussions about, like, local issues um, it started off kind of like bigger scope where everyone was just upset with Justin Trudeau and then it kind of got into like the whole Alberta versus Canada conversations about provincial versus federal identity, which we kind of talked about last uh, last show. Um, and then it like spiraled out into a bunch of things and then because we're in a comic book store, it ended off with comic book talk, <laughs> which is kind of saved the conversation for being appropriate in that place. But uh, a couple of people came in and out. It was it was kind of interesting too. I, I have a good time every time I go there. Um, you should just give you like a checklist, and every <laughs> two weeks for our show, we'll just send you out with a poll every week. Yeah, and, be like, and you could do a public yeah, opinion poll. <laughs> I, I could do a, a very, very, very narrow. What do comic book readers think of these politics, <laughs> like these political issues? Like, oh, you're at right? City Hall and stuff regularly. Yeah, that's true. You I, could, guess. I, I could ask some more politically inclined people too. Some days, not that like comic book people aren't. It's just that you're not there to talk about politics, but it ends up any happening anyways, right? Wasn't there a Comic book. You were going on about this the other day. I think after a show having beers, um, was Trudeau not in a? Yeah. So I I own a comic book with Justin Trudeau on the cover. Um, <laughs> you're just like super just. You can find cover. categories for anything on the internet. <laughs> so what it was was it was an issue of. I think it was a special issue for Marvel Comics and Robert Downey Jr. or not Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark, sorry, pretty much the same person now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's kind of just. It's more Robert Downey Jr. than it is Tony Stark at this point. That character's dead. It's been replaced with Robert Downey Jr. Um, <laughs> you got that completely <laughs> backwards. <laughs> or yeah, sorry, backwards. <laughs> um, so yeah, he was boxing, like, because he was mad, and he boxes with Justin Trudeau recreationally. Then it's just, it was a weird comic, but he's on the cover. And I've always said, if I ever get the chance to meet him, I'll get him to sign it, because. He's a little bit of a nerd, though. If you remember when he was first elected, um, there's that picture from him at Comic-Con with his family. And they're all in Superman shirts, and they're sitting in the DeLorean at the Toronto Comic-Con, I think? Or Montreal Comic-Con? Something like that. Um, so, yeah, like, he, our Prime Minister's a nerd. But you know what I learned recently? So is Jack Layton. Or did we talk? We talked about that, I think, on our last show. We did. He was a huge Harper Star was Trek. into hockey. Yeah, but and that's And ACDC. Like, ACDC is weird for him. Not the hockey part. I don't think so. Post Malone, that rapper with all the face tattoos, listens to Metallica all the time. Like you can't stereotype well, someone oh, okay. from the, like, the content like of what Malone, they put Stephen out. Post Malone, Harper, is that what you're? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his alternate identity. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, gonna do something after getting out of politics. <laughs> that's true, but yeah, to our audience again, uh, feel free to jump in at any point if there's any political discussions you want to talk about. Um, today we're just kind of doing a year in review and reflection kind of like 
episode. I guess it's kind of the thing you do on shows like this, though, where you just kind of talk about the year that's passed. Yeah. Um, different political issues that have come up. Um, were you able to share it to the page? Or? I shared it on my personal one. I'll, yeah. We'll do the page after. I'll see if I can get it on my cool. personal Facebook, too. Yeah, what's, um, the, what's the biggest part of your year as an individual? As an individual? Um, so I posted about this on Facebook. I guess this is one of the big things that I'd say um, has happened this year for myself. Um, just because this is kind of a cool opportunity for us to do something like this, and it helps us like get out on a platform that we can talk to our community about different political issues that they're facing. That's a good pitch um, reminder. We are Facebook Live. Yeah, exactly. Throw comments in. <laughs> please and feel free and to please continue. Um, and then the other two things was um, graduating university, um, which I don't think I give myself enough credit for like how cool that is. If that makes <laughs> sense, like. Mostly when it was done, I was just exhausted, so I took a couple months just for myself that I didn't want to, like, start, like, <laughs> I was going to say I didn't want to start anything new, but I think we started this right after I graduated. We started so, this like, in, when did you graduate? Uh, April. We had to postpone our show because Derek wanted to graduate first, I think? We started Something in like May. That, I think, yeah, so, like, it would have been, <laughs> that's really funny, as I say, oh, I need to take a break and then jump right into it. We were good to go, and then Derek's like, well, I might be graduating that day, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should postpone it a week. <laughs> More or less. Um, but, yeah, so graduation was huge, um, and then um, I'm transitioning between jobs, oh. which I can't speak about to media, so, just as part of a contract yeah. with the job, so. Oh, um, that's cool. But yeah, that's that. I I think is really exciting because it's a, a career that I get to put um, more of my like education into rather than it just being like a, a job per se. Not that I don't like my job that I'm leaving, but like it wasn't a job more that career. was like more yeah more career, more right. of a career job, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's been like I'd say the big things for me in 2018, um, but 2018 was more of a setup year, if that makes sense, where it was just kind of like, for me at least, this year was like kind of dedicated for like closing doors and opening other ones, so like it wasn't supposed to be like big razzle-dazzle, <laughs> like something big happened or something awful happened, uh, luckily <laughs> it wasn't something fair. awful. <laughs> uh, how about yourself? Definitely the conversion therapy thing. Yeah, that's um, huge, actually. Go like Y, y Corel Express on Facebook. Um, started that organization, launched a conversion therapy band oh, with L. Uh, uh, y Corel Society for Change. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like, like we're on projects Michael. similarly <laughs> named. Um, go like us on Facebook too, though. Uh, with with Elberg, um, and yeah, we're at well over ten thousand signatures now. Yeah, um, we're getting close. January eighteenth that closes, and we will we'll see where that goes with them now. Yeah, because I saw that online recently, and it's uh, really cool to see that, like, um, making progress, like, nationally like that. And then you were telling me that you saw an article in... Um, yeah. What was what, that? What country? Vietnam? Was Viet or, yeah, it was in Vietnam, I think. That's, yeah. I was like, it was a prominent country. There was another one. I, want, I keep <laughs> saying Portugal, but every time I go back and look, it's not Portugal. We made an article somewhere else. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's awesome that it, like it's hitting that kind of reach, right? So. Yeah. But we should probably get on with politics before we do that. Um, we talked about it last time. Good times. Yeah. Um, on that, like it's just as like a local. <laughs> a local pitch. A local kind of like we're doing a lot of like <laughs> marketing today. But, yeah. Uh, sorry, we're not trying to sell you anything. We're, we're selling other. Sell, we're trying to sell you experiences, not products. Yeah. Um, good times. It's. This Saturday, yeah. The this Saturday is their grand opening. Uh, it's five, seven, and nine. I five, think. seven, and yeah. nine. Seven is sold out. They posted. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's. I didn't know that. Um, you said you had a chance, to, or you? Well, yeah, last, yeah. After we, after our last two show. weeks today. Yeah. yeah. What did you yeah. think? The wife loved it. She mm -hmm. laughed. It was just something completely different that you don't typically get in in Lethbridge. Yeah, it's definitely like a new experience, um, and it's definitely like tapping into a market that. I think was there in Lethbridge, but no one's ever really taken advantage of it. Um, oh, it's a bold move to step yeah. out and like do something that you can't look yeah. and say, "Oh, look, they did this here." Other than like, a few comedy nights here yeah, and there exactly. that were open mic and hit or miss, mm -hmm. they're actually putting on a cohesive show. And they're building that community in Lethbridge too. So you're seeing like comics come out who are having their start here and who are yeah. getting into the scene through this uh, 
this new club or pub or whatever you want to call it. Um, but then with the way it's set up, you're close enough to the stage too that like it's you're in, in it. Like, like it's more of an intimate. Yeah, exactly. Because like if if you like this kind of stuff, like comedians might pick you out of the crowd to like use you as an example or to roast you and stuff like that. <laughs> um, which if you don't like that kind of stuff, they they won't. Pick on sit in the back. Just like, or sit, you, sit don't make the, promises you can't keep. <laughs> I was going to say, sit on the reach of the spotlight, because when they have the spotlight on them, they can't see past the front row, more or less. <laughs> um, and then, Happy New Year to Deb. Uh, oh, Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, oh, we got FM and Austin. Happy New Year's, Austin. Happy New Year. We'll have to have you on one of these days with Brandon to go over the... People's Party? Is no, no. One, um... Austin is up at 24 carats. Oh, okay. okay yeah, okay, okay, we, okay. we were talking about doing a recap of legalization once it gets a little more time. Actually, that is one of our, our things we're going to talk about today. Yeah, is, as far is as a, a of recap of 2019, uh, 2018, 2018, I'm getting ahead of myself, <laughs> was, this was is legalization. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that sometime. We're going to talk about the invasion of the aliens of July 31st, <laughs> 2019. Um, Austin, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, let's do that. Um, um, keep watching though, because it is on our list of just different things. Oh, let's Canada. just do that one now. Should we just jump into it? Okay, yeah. we'll start with that. Um, I guess I don't have to turn to it. <laughs> if we already know. Um, yeah, so we're we're just gonna do like a general uh, kind of review. Just um, running through you know a lot where of this the, was from. This was from CTV News, but just went out. Okay. Uh, list of top eight major uh, events in Canadian yeah, politics like, yeah. in 2018. If you think there's any to add, or you can think of some now, throw them in. Yeah, them out and I guess yeah. Even them. even comment some of the things like as if you can like, put a whole year into eight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Things. <laughs> what are some of the big political things that's uh, to you in 2018? It can be local, provincial, federal. Uh, we'll tolerate American too, I guess, because Donald Trump is probably going to end up on this list for somebody else. But mm, um, <laughs> we're all, we're only going to focus on like the federal issues. Yeah. These were or? Yeah. yeah. To start off, they said one of the first issues that came up, and it's supposed to be chronological order, was the hashtag MeToo movement hits Parliament Hill. So yeah. we had Trudeau's allegations of, of groping. Um, we had that, I believe it was NDP M, uh, MP, that uh, female was accused of harassing oh, yeah. that, uh, that Army veteran. Um, There's, there was quite a few, I'd say, like... Um, Allegations there's, yeah, there's like and a lot of federal allegations that come out. Um, but the good thing was they redid the like MPs' code of conduct. Mm -hmm. uh, the Senate conduct uh, was was updated as well. Um, yeah. Definitely, we um, sympathize with anyone who. And I think it, it's important to talk about this because um, if you look at like the Me Too movement as a whole, um, to the areas that have like been. I don't want to say impacted because that sounds like I'm being sympathetic to like the the accused, but I'm not trying to be. Um, but like two areas are like politics and then entertainment, and I think what we've always acknowledged as a society, we're just never like brave enough to criticize it, was that both of those realities kind of uh, they kind of give benefits to people that do these kind of wrongs, where it's like. In Hollywood, you can kind of prosper as a predator, and then the same thing kind of like... Well, that's coming like, to an end now, too. Mm -hmm. right. Like, well, they're both, both, cat like, or both, like, social domains have definitely made, like, needed changes. Um, after this, it's just kind of frustrating that, to me at least, that we all knew this was happening. It's just weird, like, and we even made jokes about it, you know, like, especially with Hollywood, like, and with politics, too. Everyone's always like, well, you just got to sleep with somebody to get ahead. And it's just like, well, why were we joking about this? And it, it's good that we're making change, but I don't like that people are acting surprised because, like, this no, stuff has been happening for years, yeah, right? Like, especially with those two domains in, in society, like, it definitely is our two aspects of our culture that bring in those types of people to, to allow them to succeed, even if they're acting that way, right? So. Yeah. Austin says, don't believe the pipe. Um, Jordan says, Jordan Hoffman. So, oh, really? first Jordan one of these I'm actually catching as it airs. Welcome, <laughs> hey, Jordan. Jordan. 
Um, Be sure to troll us. <laughs> <laughs> and then Austin says, I give Trudeau top props for legalizing cannabis, creating new jobs, and displacing criminal activities. That's a, a valid point. I, I feel like, and I always rant about this, as Canadians, we need to be less partisan, and let's just worry about getting the damn issue done. Yeah. Um, Jordan agreed with you. <laughs> How about the trolling comment? Or yeah. The other one? <laughs> Maybe both. Who knows? Okay. We've got a lot to, to get through, though. Did you have anything else to add on? on um, with me, too, one have anything to add it's just kind of a, a somber one because it, it, it is hard to talk about yeah. this stuff just because like there's people who we could do a whole episode on that yeah and then yeah it's it's kind of a tough one um but it's good to see political change happening in, in canadian politics in regards to that kind of stuff okay next up we've got uh prime minister trudeau's trip to india nine day visit um it looked ridiculous on Indian news. It looked ridiculous there by that being reflected in Canadian news. Uh, and then it, it turns out, we actually were talking with our, our producer on, on that the other day, uh, Jesse, just that there was a lot of other stuff in the background, in the works, mm -hmm. that collided to, to make it look like it was uh, supporting radicalism. Yeah, it, it definitely, like... I'd, th I'd say it had like a lot of repercussions too, because like because of this, we saw like uh, conservative leadership on like oh sorry, you keep turning I'm, the I'm always it really bad in for this us. <laughs> <laughs> um, with conservative like oppositions too across like Canada, whether it be provincially or federally, um, we saw like a rise of like where they kind of thought it was their responsibility to fix this too. So like its repercussions of that trip definitely like rippled like throughout Canadian politics, like. One, yes, it was a... Uh, we could have done with less dancing. Yeah, like, it was definitely, like, it was a, a, a learning experience for Prime Minister Trudeau, um, I would say, like, where it's, like, how how far is too far in terms of, like, uh, cultural investment, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's kinda that's, like, that's valid in the argument yeah. about, like, would, would people come to Canada and dress in a, a lumberjack outfit? Yeah, like, there's a certain point where it seems, like, almost, like... Too far? Like... Stereotypical where it starts like, to yeah. be a little more comedic than yeah, like than, exactly um, right. Like it's it's fine. Like in in a political landscape internationally, like people understand that you're probably gonna wear like what's appropriate for your country, which in this case would be like a, a suit. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like so, um, I mean kudos to him for like getting invested. Like that is something that's cool to see. But I think it was like a something that like people were just like yeah, kind of die too quick into something like this, you know what I mean? Jordan said he was agreeing with your Me Too comment, um, people acting surprised, and they've been joking about yeah. it for years, but he will troll you from now on out. <laughs> um, Austin says, I, I saw this comment, I think it was on Austin's post, um, Balbura says that Hindi, Hindu Kush grows in ditches in India, same genetic seeds are selling here legally now at $15 per seed plus tax. I saw that, I thought those prices were crazy. Like, what is this, sorry? Uh, like, they're selling they're... marijuana seeds here now legally, mm -hmm. but it's like 15 bucks a seed. Really? And then tax on top of that. And um, uh, a wow. friend of, of his and uh, yours as well Yeah. Um, said that that grows in the ditch in India. Mm -hmm. Just, I didn't know that. Yeah. That, that's Jesse, interesting. Jesse's like, agreeing with that. <laughs> Jesse's <wanting> to... <laughs> wow, that's kind of interesting. I had no idea. Yeah. That's a, a cool fact for sure. Um, but I think that's where, like, I, I saw a, a comment on a, on a, like, local news thread about marijuana where people were kind of upset with legalization because they thought, um, we'll just jump into legalization, that's what <laughs> everyone wants to talk about. Um, okay. So, yeah, like, a lot of people criticize it as, like, vote or vote buying, and, like, this is the whole reason liberals won the election. And I feel like that's a little bit exaggerated where it's, like, it, it's an element to the election, maybe, but, like, I don't think every Canadian was like, we want legal weed. Um, I think it's cool to look at it culturally, too, though. There is, oh, it grows in the ditch here and here. Man, <laughs> did you see? It was a few years ago. Somebody planted a row of pot plants in, uh, I think it was Victoria. Victoria okay. or, or Vancouver. Through, like, a, you know how... Uh, the city will come in and like put flowered plants, yeah. whatever. Somebody put, like, 100 pot plants out. Those were cleaned up so damn fast. It's and it's again like I. Um, oh, to finish that comment real quick. All they, <laughs> all they said was, um, even if you don't like this, you're foregoing like a billion dollar industry. 
that can help our country in like a in in a tight place right now. Yep. Anyways, and I thought that was a good point. But to talk to that, like it is. I, I again, I saw this comment on another local news thread. Skin City um, Planters, thank you, Austin. Oh, I, I forgot that detail. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, that was a good story. <laughs> but it's a with, plant, and I think yeah. that's whoever, who the heck puts out that many plants for free. But I think that was the whole point the of whole, it. It was it like was definitely gorilla, protest, gorilla like, activism. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's here. It's a plant. Nobody's hurt. But my kid put their foot on it. No, that's probably not <laughs> <laughs> sure um, that. Well, it's just the needle. I was joking. Anyways. Robert um, Bronzecombe says, hi, Derek. Oh, hey. We got the whole Toys R Us thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Austin said it was part of an Overgirl Canada campaign. Oh, okay. Because, um, yeah, like, with with that, I somebody was saying, like, when pot would become legal that we would look back on, like, the prohibition of the substance kind of comedically. I think and it's, it's going like, to happen. Looking bit, back like, at prohibition of alcohol. Of alcohol. Neither of them like, worked. Yeah, and then you kind of realize, like, oh, like, this substance in moderation is, like, appropriate and, like, it's not a big deal and like i think we we really quickly got that as a culture because like even walking to our studio today like you pass uh like a, a pot store pretty much any direction you take to get here at this point i think that's the and, only like, one actually is it the spirit spirit leaf yeah. is it is that what it's called i think, I think so. um yeah but that that didn't phase me at all when i was like oh you know what like pot being legal maybe i'll be a little bit caught off guard seeing it but at this point i'm like oh no and, like, I've seen the substance in person now. I'm like, oh, it's like seeing a, a, a beer bottle. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like it doesn't really. I like, just wish they would do something about all that plastic packaging they put on it. <laughs> I've heard that's one of the biggest, like, complaints is people are upset about the way it's been packaged because, one, it's wasteful, or, two, it's just impractical. But I think that'll be something we'll see as the substance becomes more culturally accepted. We'll see changes come up being like, okay, less strict regulation, so on and so forth. What I loved, I saw a post tied to, to 24 Carat, and it was uh, just a comment that a lot of people have said they've had trouble getting into their um, their packaging. So mm -hmm. 24 Carat, <laughs> if, if you have arthritis or just not able to open the package, mm -hmm. take it to 24 Carat. They have uh, pliers and jaws oh, alive. Okay. Like, they'll get that package open. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. Like, that is kind of cool. Um, what was I going to say to that? Um, On that note, I guess with Overgrow Canada, I guess they gave away 12,000 CBD strain cannabis seeds in Lethbridge in 2017. Oh, really? That's wow. Quite, uh, okay. Quite the amount. That's. Yeah. Oh. oh I, that's that's Mark Emery, I believe, if I recall correctly. I'm, okay. Austin says we can open any package. <laughs> at there 24 we go. There, if you need help, yeah. you know who to go to now. Um, uh, Alan says, in my social problems course, I'm discussing with students about how mm -hmm. social problems are not static, are historical, and are and always being negotiated. Example, alcohol and, and marijuana. I think that's a, a good way to look at it. It's not a static problem. Yeah. It's historical, and it's being negotiated. Well, that's like what we were saying on the walk over here, is right and wrong is a cultural construct. Yeah, and I think that gets to the root of all of this, is that the, the big, like connections and stuff like that is definitely culture, I'd say, between all of this, where it's, like, um, not even necessarily, like, within time, but it, within space as well, so, like, where you are and, like, your community. And cultural or, differences. Yeah, like, exactly, um, right? Like, these problems kind of, like, take form in different places and all that kind of stuff, but um, that's pretty cool for that course, too. Did you see that thing? Uh, this bothers me, personally, because I think this is a little bit ridiculous. Um, but what it is is that um, some employers in Canada are considering doing drug testing now and that if you have, like, traces of marijuana that your employment can be threatened. And it's like, eh, it's legal. The whole point of this is that it's okay to do it now. That's, like, what this law is, is saying. And, like, I've seen people make the joke where they're like, you don't have to have a breathalyzer test at work or, like, stuff like that where it's like, yeah, like, what people do at home – is now their choice like and yeah. it, it it's also like a profession thing because i've heard that rcmp officers have to be drug tested that's like that's, still. that's that's the misconception though it depends on which department mm -hmm. and like 
Who, right? There's because like that, Vancouver has different laws, the Moss Bridge has different laws than well, Calgary. And that, that, that I understand, where it's like you kind of have to create like a uniform thing that can exist. But that's the thing. When it's not uh, mm-hmm. a provincially or federally mandated police department in every location, it each has group to. is going to have their own their yeah. own laws. And that's where it's like, that's where, I don't know, I'm frustrated with that because that's nobody's business in that regard. Like, it's not impeding your ability to work. And then if it gets to that point, it'll become visibly obvious or something like that no different than with like an addiction to alcohol or something like that um it's just that that frustrates me that's when i get a little bit more like uh, our freedoms are being impeded upon I guess. <laughs> I'm I'm into, no worries <laughs> it's like that tilt the world like ride at the fair <laughs> but yeah that that frustrates me personally but i don't know anyone watching yeah weigh in let us you, know what you think <laughs> yeah would you be okay with your employer uh, potentially threatening your employment based on you consuming marijuana? Like, is that a fair thing to do? Like, I don't um, know. There's got to be some sort of, and even if there's a, a justifiable reason for testing, mm-hmm. um, there's got to be some leeway as far as when you last consume. Yeah, because like if like you're that. if you're smoking in the break room, or like you're smoking on lunch, like that's a problem because it's no different than like cracking open a beer, like at, at yeah. like on premise of a job or something. Um, it's more an issue if it's like I was off work on a day off, like, let me do what I want, right? Like, yeah, don't come in mm-hmm. still drunk the next day, but... Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> don't, don't come in high to work, that's a problem. Okay, <laughs> like. uh, another one that I wanted to talk about. Um, Keegan says, happened to me. If you, you want to share more details, go for it. If not, uh, we appreciate you, you weighing in. Um, in the meantime, though, yeah, uh, it, I thought this was hilarious that it made this list. Uh, Maxime Bernie in the People's Party of Canada made the list of uh, top eight biggest political things in, in Canada. <laughs> How so long do you want their show to be? <laughs> <laughs> he got in a fight with Sheer, which, come on, let's face it, everybody saw that coming. Um, he's been after him since the leadership race. He's been goading him, leaking chapters of his own book. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly feel right now he'd be running on a better, better platform if it was less about the dairy industry, uh, because that's not going to appeal to all of Canada. That will appeal, however, to Quebec, which is very potentially what he's going for. Mm-hmm. Maybe if he gets enough seats there, if any, um, then that would ground him better to yeah. make a more encompassing platform. That's the thought I've, I've had on that as well. Well, um, with, with Jesse, if you need to slip out, go for it. If you're <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have a guest for like three <laughs> seconds here, everyone. There we go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, um, or I guess do we want to close the door real quick? We're going to close the door real quick. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, we're just sharing the studio with everyone else right now. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think the tough thing with federal politics in Canada is that we've seen a fractured right wing before and I know right wing like voters either don't want to hear this or they'll get upset with me talking about this. I'm just but, like, disputing the fact that it is fractured. Yet, right? Like we could still we could still see it happen. I don't know if we will because it's just a matter of like will Maxine Bernier be able to tap into this alternative conservative like desire and is that desire big enough to impact a point where we see more than like one federal seat or will it give like, the liberals another majority that's well personally what i think is going to happen i don't think it's going to come to that i i think we'll see a liberal government whether that be minority or majority and i think one of the factors is maxine bernier i do um, think the liberals will run again and i my my thing with that though is i don't know how much of a factor max is gonna have yeah because like if he really does fracture the right then there's no hope because i i don't think the NDPs strong enough to challenge the left right now, federally? Sorry. Sure the understand. Conservatives have Alberta and most of the Prairie Provinces. Um, the NDP. Hit or miss. Uh, Toronto, some places of BC. Um, anywhere that's... I don't think there's anywhere that it's going to make such a huge difference that enough people are going to vote you... Um, yeah. I keep wanting to call it UCP, <laughs> People's PPC, People's P- Party of Canada. Yes, PPC. I think uh, it's like which is French Mad Max's, a different, yeah. uh, organization for the letters there. But. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's really going to make a, a difference, other than maybe in potentially Quebec, which 
would be taking away from the liberals, if anything. But the liber or the Quebec has no or uh, elected fringe parties before, like the Bloc, right? So like. That's why he's trying to make it a Canadian party as compared to a, a, a just but a Quebec he's, party. I, I think he's fighting an uphill battle there because the Conservative stronghold is in the prairies, and I feel like the Conservatives hate Quebec enough that they don't want to elect a French. That's going to be his biggest you know issue I mean? with like, this is all the rhetoric uh, and such between Jason Kenney, um, Andrew Scheer, and this, Doug Ford. this yeah Doug Ford and this pipeline thing is let's re renegotiate equalization, let's not give Quebec anything further. Why give him a prime minister? Yeah, exactly right. So, so I, I don't know if that's going to be the demise of Maxime Bernier. Um, I guess we'll see if he takes his own writing. Uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, that will be because it's a matter of like, because for like somebody like Derek Fiddlebrand, for example, <laughs> Phil De I, Phil DeBrand, whatever. I mess up his last name all the time. <laughs> he watches this. Um, <laughs> he he's a personality candidate, so I think his writing will elect him no matter what party he's a part of. You know, what whereas I'm not him, actually that. You don't think so? I, I don't know. I'm saying I don't think I disagree with you. Oh, fair enough. Um, whereas I think with Maxime, is his riding one off of him or his party? Like, is it a conservative stronghold or do they like him as a candidate? And at least in Alberta, we might not be close enough to, to fill the brand's riding to have a like a local sure. say on that. Oh, true, yeah. Um, like they say, no no press is, is bad press. And uh, Phil DeBrandt, uh, just back to marijuana, that they do oh. test for that. They need to test for other substances, too. Oh, true, I guess. Yeah. But uh, how far can a personality carry someone? Um, what type of policy are they going to put forward? Our last show was so glitchy and cut out a lot. I, I apologize for that. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah. Technical difficulties last time. We did talk a bit about that. Are you Albertan first, or are you Canadian first? Are you yeah. party first, or are you issue-oriented? Uh, um, and I, I, a lot of this is going to come down to that, is how cohesive are the policies being put forward? Derek Fildebrandt's running on a, um, essentially, get the respect from Ottawa that Albertans deserve, or leave the country, which, as we discussed, we went into to detail about uh, the vast majority of Albertans recently polled didn't support separation. But everyone will keep saying that we do. I think you said didn't, right? Yeah, we yeah, didn't. Overwhelmingly, we, we don't. It was just under half, though. It was still pretty close. Um, but whether or not that's enough to win a provincial election when they haven't had time to put candidates out, the only person in the, the Freedom Conservative Party provincially is that's known as, as Derek Fildebrand. We're way off topic. We were on Maxine Bernier. <laughs> Let's quickly try to run through a few of these other ones. Uh, jump in uh, if you've got anything now. Um, oh, of course, 4.5 million on a pipeline. Four, yeah, that's 4.5. Are you trying to read the comments? Yeah, I'm trying to, but my Facebook is not. Oh, we just got a new Michael, one. yes, um, it's Facebook Live. We're kind of working through a list of um, a list that CTV put out of the biggest uh, political things in Canada um, in 2018. Uh, but yeah, we're open. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you have any recommendations, please like comment below just some things, and we'll uh, definitely talk about them. What's the next one? Um, with that, yeah, um, pipelines. Oh. Did you have any yeah. comments on that? That was a um, huge thing. I, I'm not sure if that's going to win. Trudeau any more support in Alberta, or if that's just going to make people hate him more? Yeah, I think with the pipeline, I was talking a little bit about that today at the <laughs> comic, uh, comic book store discussion I was mentioning. Um, one of the huge things with the pipeline is I think people really have to give Justin credit for it to a certain extent, where, and, I th and this is, I know I'll get back to that. And I think uh, Alberta needs to sort of like bear with Canada for a bit here because I don't think the Canadian government, like the federal government and the uh, federal liberals aren't trying to get this pipeline built. I think there's just too many roadblocks that aren't irrelevant. It's just that we're looking at this from like an Albertan perspective and as, as Albertans who support the oil industry, whereas a lot of people don't support the oil industry, they're not Albertan. How much of this is relevant to the country 
how much of this is relevant to Alberta, and then at what point is this accommodation kind of back and forth needed for this to go through properly? Because yeah. it's absolutely fair to criticize conservative leadership that existed before this government on why don't you have, why didn't you create this? We saw a line, what they want is they want provincial conservatives and federal conservatives, and then they say they'll get it done. You literally just had that. We just had that as a country and as a province. Why wasn't it done then, right? So yeah, it's like, and then we've had another almost four years of, of liberals who could have got it done too. Well, I'm like, just going <laughs> just gonna to interrupt you for a second. Uh, Michael, um, can you elaborate about the viral YouTube video from Saturday? It oh, is a, I, I know what this is. Um, so what this is is recently in Lethbridge. This is a local issue. Is this um, the Yellow Vests? The Yellow Vest Nazis, and I will mm, bluntly I say Nazis because they are 100% Nazis. Um, there was a, a recent issue where there was the Yellow Vest. <laughs> what happened? Nothing. Oh, okay. Keep going. I'll, read it I'll later. see what I. It was probably said about me. Um, it was. It was good. <laughs> um, so yeah. So in Lethbridge, there's been Yellow Vest protests and then counter protests um, outside of City Hall. I think for the last three weeks or something or two it's weeks. It's been about or three weeks. Yeah, I or think or two or and one coming up this weekend. I think. Yeah, there is That's one a... coming up this weekend, but I, I don't know if it was for two prior to this or three prior to this. Uh, but it's outside City Hall and it's yellow vest protesting and then um, counter protesting. And there's a viral video that came around, uh, and this is all outside of Lethbridge, like outside of our City Hall. And there's these two individuals there who are clear Nazis. So like one of them has the 1488 written on their shirt, which is like a Nazi um, symbol. It's the 14 words, I think is what it's called. But they're not it's Nazis, like, they're not fascists. What are they calling themselves? Uh, they're calling themselves National Socialists. National Socialists. And then in the video, the, the woman claims... That is like actually the def... That's where... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then she claims that Nazi was a racial slur created by Jewish people. She was also... So like, there's another video that they just put out, I think it was today. Um, that someone sent in of, of this one of these individuals and she's just going on about white genocide and it's it's white definitely one of those things it. where I've seen a couple people kind of be seduced by the yellow vest movement where they kind of see it as like this right wing movement in Canada or this grassroots Canadian people first kind of argument I'm completely but behind the right to protest like I said last week and once like, again sorry if it cut out. I, I didn't go back and watch it because I hate hearing myself talk. Um, uh, it's great to see Canadians mobilizing and getting out it there, is. but I think the issue with this is we're seeing individuals expressing hatred and bigotry yes. and it not being condemned from the rest of the yellow. And um, that's that's the vest huge movement. that's a huge failure of the yellow vest movement is you lose all legitimacy if you don't jump on this and say they're not with us, this isn't okay. Because at the moment, all that we've heard from the Yellow Vest is that we welcome everyone in our group. And it's like... You've got to draw the line you somewhere. You have to when draw one... the line at Nazis. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's the line. That is the clear line here where no one should welcome Nazis to their table. Like, you know what I mean? You don't share a meal with a Nazi. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and that... family values, your grandparents... Nazis. Well, that's and that's like, I, I heard somebody like, there's a, this has kind of been a, a regular thread there, they're like, can you imagine being a veteran or like somebody who lived through those wars and now you're watching your grandkids like have to fight this ideology again and you're on your way, like, and not to be morbid, but you're on your way out, like, and you're like, fuck, it's back. Like and there's nothing I language. can do. Sort of like, <laughs> but it's like there's nothing you can do to stop it because you're you're on your way out. So you have to hope that your kids, your grandkids, pick are going to be able to 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 push this back, right? And like I I think it it really speaks to the volumes that like this sort of fascist ideal has existed for longer than just World War Two. That's just like our earliest memory of it. But I bet you, well, like I said, like, it, I, it doesn't reflect and even I don't think even Derek's comments would reflect on the yellow vest movement we're happy to see this level of engagement just draw it's, the line it's cool to see people mobilize even if like I personally don't agree with that movement but absolutely Cut, you, you draw another the line. week to go go out there you, and say you're not welcome here and like it's another thing where it's like you're 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 wrong if you think freedom of speech means hatred 
That's not what freedom of speech was created for. And again, it's, what's with the rest of these protests, and we discussed this last time as well, the demands are not necessarily clear. So not. at the same it's, time, it's, it's a very, how can, when, you, yeah. when you make a big deal out of not allowing people into your country, um, well, uh, like it, I heard, it's a fine line. I saw someone recently say that like Yellow Vests are about like, getting rid of our treasonous prime minister and I'm like you don't know what treason means <laughs> like Do and it's like is that is that making comments like that Vote and then against him then if you don't like exactly him, right like treason carries a death penalty we're yes and, and like we're exactly? not America like a lot of people assume like they're using terms like freedom of speech and treason and stuff like this and it's like those are more American concepts like in no Canada, it's not even that these are catch words mm -hmm. that get thrown well, around yeah. because they agitate it gets people upset where you're like, oh, I'm not allowed to say what I want. Like, that's, oh, geez. That's the it's difference like, between a logical debate or argument versus and like a movement rhetoric. that's getting out of control. Like they, and it's it's going to it's going to snuff itself out um, because it's not addressing the problems that it has. And every reasonable person will be like, I'm not standing next to a Nazi wearing the same coat holding the same sign. No way. Like that's not okay. Like if I was in the if I was in that yellow vest movement. And then I look to my left and I see that 1488. Um, and then, like, the other one, I think she had proud white mom or something like that mm, on her shirt. The or, video I saw today was White Lives Matter. Or White Lives Matter, sorry. And then sorry, going yeah. on about white genocide. Yeah, then I'd be like, no, I'm going to stand as far away from these people as I can. Like, um, But what are some of the comments saying? I saw a couple of jumping. Derek just takes a minute to himself mid-show to look at memes on his phone. I wasn't looking at me. I was getting comments. I, I really appreciated that comment. <laughs> I was getting comments loaded on my phone, um, but it didn't work, so we're going off this one. Um, and then... Damn, they're trying to be OG Nazis. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, that's, that's, like, the real thing is that it's, like, um, in this, like, modern political landscape, like, a lot of people try to say that uh, we use Nazi as a culture to kind of, like, win an argument or to make the other person look bad. But, like, no, this isn't, they're not tiptoeing around it. They're just straight up, we are Nazis, we support Nazi values. Like, that's a problem, right? So, yeah. do we have a new comment? Yeah, it's, I gotta. Do you think seeing this level of extremism on the right in Canada is a spillover from the U.S.? With a lot of political discussion, it seems that many Canadians in regular discussion on both sides of the spectrum seem to forget their differences in the social climate in both countries. Yes, I completely think that is part of the case. We've got a, a president screaming about building a wall, um, mm -hmm. encouraging people to, to report immigrants. And fine, if you agree with keeping immigration legal and things like that, not any reflection on my, my, my opinion on it, but I see that perspective. It, it's when it starts coming from a place of hatred and yeah. tearing down other cultures and calling them slurs and awful yeah. countries um, mm -hmm. I, and, and things like that, that you start to essentially incite uh, the public to, to hatred. And that's racism and hatred is nothing new to America. Yeah. I, I'd say America is a part of it just because of their like global stage. So they have a lot more like influence uh, globally. Yeah. Um, it's tough, though, because there was that recently elected uh, leader in Brazil who's no different. And just came in and, and like, took out a bunch of queer rights. Yeah, and like, and Donald Trump apparently like congratulated him, and I'm seeing comments around on like Canadian news threads that are saying, we need this in Canada. So I think what we're, we're seeing a rise of this vile, like, fascist kind of like preference coming back but it doesn't look the same as it did in world war ii it's it'll, more it'll be interesting yeah it's it's more of this like media oriented fascism where it's like you kind of take advantage of like the new sort of like social media platform to use that as an excuse to be like yeah. well fake news or if it's on the internet it's not real kind of thing right where it's like you're kind of using certain things to like stir up fear and then rather than it being like an attack on necessarily Jewish people it's more of an attack on uh, other cultures Muslims or... um, we're seeing uh, South America targeted a lot like it's it's the same kind of thing it's just a different group and yeah. they're targeting them differently um, but you're seeing the same old bullshit and like sorry for yeah. saying that um, with this whole like European pride European like 
there's and this is what pisses me off. Sorry again for the language. It's fine to be like, I'm proud because I'm Scottish, or I'm proud because I'm English, or whatever the circumstance is. No one's taking that away from you. And if you Celebrate think the like culture and diversity, go go for it. But like, don't make it like I'm I'm a proud European who hates anyone who's not. That's when you're crossing a line, or when you're like. I know it's when you base it off the color of someone's skin. Yeah, yeah. But I would even say it's like part of it's a little bit cultural, part, part of it's religious though, right? Because you see these same people, they, they post like that crusader picture as their Facebook profile picture, and they're trying to be like the this European Christian elite. And it's yeah. like anyone who's not Christian, and we're going to restart the crusades, we're going to kill Muslims, we're going to kill uh, anyone who's not in Europe because we're a dominant group. And it's like, no, you're not. Like... Yeah. It it's it's one of those things where it's frustrating because you're you're painting it as like national pride or cultural pride, and same thing. You can say I'm a proud Canadian, go for it, but being a proud Canadian isn't hating your neighbor. You know what I mean? Like that's the irony of it. And being a proud Canadian isn't saying we should close our borders to everyone. You can be critical of immigration, but you shouldn't be hateful. Like I I think that kind of goes back to your yeah. point. Where it's the hate that's really the problem with it, right? I think that's probably a good note to, to wrap up on. We're pretty much at time. Um, oh, are we? Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly, we went. We didn't make it through the whole list. Um, so <laughs> we will sign off. Uh, keep commenting. We, we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, um, we'll get these comments let's, after let's the show's dialogue. live. Oh, if, they're, if they're good enough, we'll bring them up next week. Yeah, or um, we can comment yeah, potentially sure, like sure. after the show, too, but... But yeah, we're here every two weeks, 6 p.m., um, Mountain Standard Time. Uh, did you have anything to, to add? Uh, no, I feel like I just ended up ranting about Nazis <laughs> at the end there. That tends to be how some of our shows close, though, is me just going off on a tangent about it. Um, but I appreciate that being brought up, I guess, as a closing remark. Um, just because that's in our community, these are people that... That was a really good link like, to, to go out on. Yeah, because these are people you'll you'll potentially pass on the street, and that's a very terrifying thing, especially since they're directly targeting vulnerable people in our community who we could see hurt someday. Yeah. Um, that I think it's important for us to get on top of this and to 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 say that this isn't okay, and that these sort of behaviors, opinions, and actions aren't all right. So, cool. Well, yeah. thanks for tuning in, and we'll thanks see you in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I guess we gotta like cross over to turn off the the thing so i'll just talk for a couple more minutes here until we get our uh stuff up but i'll pull up the comments here on my phone um here we go <laughs> so behind behind the scenes action there everyone you get to see the man behind the camera <laughs>